Hey everyone, Jonathan Wood from Wintellect here to give a video introduction to the ML.NET framework from Microsoft, which is a way to create machine learning pipelines in C Sharp. There's a blog post coming out soon that will go over the same material here, but I thought a video version would be nice to have as well. What I'm going to show is how to use ML.NET to make the same linear regression model that we did in this post where I use scikit-learn in Python. The data we used in that post and that we're going to use in this post is of some fake salary data based off years of experience. It's a very simple data set since the focus is of how to use ML.NET and not on the data itself. And here I am in a blank .NET Core 2 console project in Visual Studio. My data is already here in the solution and to make sure the program can see it, I need to tell it to copy if it's newer. This copies it to the bin directory where the exe is so the data and the program will be in the same directory. Before we do anything else though, we need to tell our project to compile to 64-bit instead of the default 32-bit. To change this, right click on the project and click Properties. Then go to the Build tab and change the platform target to x64. We need to do this since ML.NET only supports projects that target x64. Now that the data is ready, let's go to Manage NuGet Dependencies and then search for ML.NET and then we will just install it. So let's look at our data again. We have two columns, years experience and salary. In order for ML.NET to read in the data, we need to model it out. To do that, create a new class, and we'll name this class Salary Data. Then we need to add fields based on our columns. And if our data has column headers, it's best to keep the names the same. Lastly, we need to add a column attribute to each field to tell ML.NET which position in each row the field is in so it can map the data to each field. And that was our input data. We need to do something similar to our output data. Create another class. And for this class, we'll name it Salary Prediction. And this time, we'll give it a field of what we want as our output from our model. We'll name this Predicted Salary. And we also need to give it an attribute for ML.NET to know about it. Instead of column, column, we give this one an attribute of column name. Since we know we'll be making a regression model, we'll give it the name of Score. Now that we got our input and output classes created, let's make our pipeline. To do this, we create an instance of learning pipeline. Inside this pipeline is where we add our steps to perform our machine learning model, from loading the data to giving it what algorithm to use. And speaking of loading data, that's the first thing we'll add. To do this, we instantiate an instance of the text loader class. And don't forget to add using statements for these classes as we go. Then the path to our dataset, since we have it in our solution and to copy over, we just need to put in the name of the file. Then we call the createFrom method. This method is generic, so it can take in any type. But what we need to give it is the class that models what our data is, which is the salary data class that we first created. For parameters, for parameters, we need to tell it to use the first line as a header and that our separator or delimiter is a comma. Next to add in our pipeline is that we need to concatenate all of our columns that we'll be using to pass into the algorithm to train against to see if it can find a pattern. When we do this, it will put all of our columns into one column and we will call it features. Since we only have one column to use as a feature, we will just pass that one column in. And our last item in the pipeline is where we tell what algorithm to use. In our case, we will use a regression algorithm. Spe specifically, we'll use a generalized additive model regressor. 
Now that we have our pipeline filled in, let's train on our data. To do this, all we have to do is call the train method on the pipeline. This is also generic and we need to give it two types, one for the model of data input and one for the model of the data output. Our input is the same as when we loaded in our data, salary data. Our output is going to be the second class we created earlier that holds the predicted value, salary predictions. Now that we have our model, we need to determine how well it can do on data it hasn't seen before during training. For that, we have a separate file of test data. We split this out to prevent what's called overfitting. If a model has overfit on a training data, it won't evaluate method, it won't perform very well to new data, which is the whole point of creating our model. To evaluate on our model, we load in our test data the same as we did for our training data. Then we create a new instance of an evaluator class. From that instance, we can call the evaluate method and pass in our model and our test data. The regression evaluator returns some metrics that we can use to determine how well our model performs on the test data. The two to look at most are the root mean squared and the R squared values. Let's run this and see what we get. The root mean squared value measures the difference between the values we gave our model for training and the values that it predicted on our test data. This metric will tell you how off your predictions are when using this model. The closer to zero this value is, the better your model performs. So for our model, we were on average off by $4,400, so there can be some room for improvement. The R squared value measures the distance between the actual values in your model to determine how close or far away they are. This measurement is going to be between 0 and 1, where the closer to 1 your value is, the better your model should perform. There are some limitations to R squared, which I'll have a post in the description that goes over that into more details. So the root mean squared value is the metric to pay closer attention to. Now let's predict on some new data to see what our model gives us. We do this by calling the predict method on our model. We need to pass in as a parameter the same type as our data input model, salary data. And since we only used years experience as a feature above in our pipeline, this is the only value we need to set. Let's give it a value of 7 and see what we get. With that, we get a value of 98187 as our predicted salary. So we just built a machine learning pipeline in c -sharp with just a few lines of code thanks to ML.net. More features are coming out soon, so be on the lookout for more videos and blog posts on it. If there is any feedback, feel free to reach me on Twitter at jwood, and I'll see y'all next time.